back with another cooking segment. This time I'm going to be attempting carrot cake. It's called the best carrot cake, but we'll be the judge. Um, I've never made it before. I think I made carrot cake maybe once in my life. Um, even though I've done several baking segments, I'm really not much of a baker, but this recipe seemed like one that even I could follow. So um, I've gotten all my ingredients re ready. Not everything is measured yet, but what I did was I already, st first of all, I started out by greasing and flouring three nine inch round pans, because this is gonna be a three layer cake. And then um, in this bowl of my dry ingredients, I have two cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of salt, and two, uh, two teaspoons of cinnamon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix those ingredients together. And again, I like this bowl because it has a spout, so when we pour the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients, it makes it easy to do that. Now, for our wet ingredients, I'm gonna start out by beating three eggs. Here are my eggs. One, two, three. Oops. Just got a little piece of shell in there. Fortunately, it was a big piece, so it was easy to take out. Okay, wipe my hands off. Okay, so I'm going to beat these. Okay, those are beaten together. Now I'm going to add, let's see, what do I add? Two cups of sugar. Make sure I'm doing this right. Eggs, next ingredients. Sugar, yep. Two cups of sugar, three quarters of a cup of vegetable oil, which hopefully I have enough because that was one ingredient I forgot to check on before my production assistant, Greg Patton, went shopping the other day. Okay, three quarters of a cup of vegetable oil, in this case canola oil, and three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. teaspoons of vanilla extract. <coughs> One, two. And here's my daily plug for pensies. Unfortunately, they're closed right now, but hopefully we'll be able to go there or order again from them soon. Um, okay, what do we do? So we beat these ingredients at a medium speed until smooth. Start off a little slower. Okay, now we are gonna add the flour and we are going to beat at a low speed until blended. So I like to put my pouring shield on. I'm 
just going to slowly add the flour mixture a little bit at a, at a time because that helps it get nice and blended in. Hopefully this will be a good recipe for Easter. We've got the carrots, which we know the Easter Bunny enjoys and all kinds of sweet goodies. It's going to have nuts and um, coconut and pineapple in it. Coconut is a little bit like cilantro in that I think it's a very polarizing food. Some people love coconut, some people hate coconut. I love it. Um, I love the texture of it and I like the flavor of it. So. That's going to mix up until it's blended. which is, I would say, about now. Now, we are going to fold in the carrots. Um, I always have trouble getting the pan, the bowl out of the mixer for some reason. Ugh. Okay. Um, there's a couple little parts of flour in here that I see didn't really get mixed in, so I'm just going to go ahead and get that mixed in. So it's nice and blended. Now, we're going to fold in two cups of grated carrots. I grated these before. I used a hand grater, a box grater, because I really didn't feel like pulling down the um, food processor and setting it up and then cleaning all the parts. So it was just as easy to do it by hand. going to go ahead and get those two cups of carrots in there and gently fold it in. And my production assistant's running all over the place. My, my, or my, uh, um, what's it called? Director of Photography, DP. I don't know what he's doing exactly, but hopefully nothing's wrong. Okay. And now we're going to add, let's see, the next three ingredients, which would be an 18 ounce, or no, sorry, an eight ounce can of crushed pineapple drained. can of flaked coconut. This is a seven ounce bag of flaked coconut. So I guess that means, sorry, I had to get a scissors. I guess that means I'll add about half the bag. Just, I'm just going to have to eyeball. All right, that looks about right. And what's the last ingredient? Oh, a cup of chopped pecans or walnuts. So I have a cup of chopped pecans here. Add all that in. And I'm going to fold those ingredients in. Mm. Boy, just this mixture makes it look like it's going to be a delicious tasting cake with a lot of texture and a lot of flavor. I think these flavors should really blend well together. We've got the carrots, the pineapple, the pecans, and the coconut. And now we're going to put them in our prepared pans. Oh, I forgot to mention that on the pans, in addition to being greased and floured, I cut a circle of wax paper to put on the bottom first, then greased and floured the pans. Oops, getting a little drippy here. Again, I'm just trying to eyeball it to make the layers relatively even. 
And once I put this in the oven, I'm going to sort of keep an eye on it because since I'm going to have to place them on two racks, I don't know if they'll cook that evenly, so I may wind up switching the racks halfway through. Um, we'll see. Okay. Okay, now we are going to bake it at 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes, or as with all baking, until a wooden, tooth, wooden toothpick inserted in the center comes out three. It's clean. Sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. So um, I'm going to let this bake, and um, actually while this is baking, I'm going to make the glaze. Okay, now I am making the buttermilk glaze, which is going to go on each of the layers, and we're going to pour that glaze on the layers when they're hot and fresh out of the oven, so I'm making the glaze while the cakes are still cooking, because that glaze is going to absorb into the cake and give it a lot of flavor. So what I've got here is, let's see, a cup of sugar, one and a half teaspoons of baking soda, a half a cup of buttermilk, a half a cup of butter, um, a tablespoon of light corn syrup and we're going to bring that to a boil so actually probably what I'll do is go away and come back in a minute because you don't need to literally watch a pot boiling um, but what we're gonna I'll explain it to you now so we're gonna bring that to a boil and then we're gonna um, stir it carefully for four, for about four minutes and then we're going to remove it from the heat and then we're going to add in a table or no sorry a teaspoon of vanilla extract so um i probably should have softened my butter ahead of time but this will all cook eventually okay all my ingredients are in here and i brought them to a boil and now i'm stirring for approximately four minutes i turned the heat down a little bit just so it wouldn't continue to be like an angry boil but just barely boiled so the recipe actually calls for you to do this part in a large Dutch oven. My Dutch oven is very, very large, so I did it in this um, pan because it's nice and heavy. It's a Le Creuset uh, wrought iron enamel pan. Um, it's about, I think it's about a two-quart pan, and I will say it's just a little bit small. The, um, the ingredients expand as they cook, and it's pretty much up to the top. So if I had a choice, I'd probably do it in a little bit bigger um, pan but it's really important to continue stirring so it doesn't get burned it doesn't stick and all the ingredients blend together especially because there is baking soda in this glaze and you want to make sure that the bitterness of the baking soda um, cooks out which it will do if you follow these directions okay uh, these cakes look done. My toothpick came out clean. I think it was a total of about 25 minutes. Now I have a convection oven and I like to convect because it gets the air flowing nice and evenly. So sometimes you have to watch your cooking times a little more carefully because it can cook a little bit quicker. Um, it didn't really cook quicker but definitely the minimum amount of time is what was necessary. So I'm going to place those on my cooling racks and let me get a good, I think I'll try, I'm going to try a ladle. Um, oh, I have to add my vanilla. That's right. A teaspoon of vanilla extract. That's my teaspoon. Let me just wash that out. Sadly, I'm almost out of my vanilla. And you'll see the glaze, just because of the cooking and adding the vanilla, takes on a nice, almost caramel color. Um, so the next thing we are going to do is to pour the glaze, drizzle the glaze evenly over the layers. And we're gonna keep those layers in their pans on the cooling rack. And as I said, those are fresh out of the oven. 
Um, so, you know what? I need to grab, this is a little warm. It's not burning hot, but it's a little warm. So, let me grab an oven mitt. Okay. Trying to cover the surface. Now, I, uh, let me tell you about the scones. Some of you may have heard this story already. But when Greg and I first went to Ireland back in 1988, um, I bought a cookbook there that had a recipe for scones. So we went in September or October. And the following St. Patrick's Day, I decided I would make the scones. It seemed appropriate, it seemed like good timing. So one thing I don't know if I realized when I bought them, when I bought the cookbook, was that it was all in metric measurements. So first I had to convert all the measurements. Um, so I did that, or so I thought, and I made the scones and they came out I mean, I think if I said that they came out like hockey pucks, that would be an insult to hockey pucks. They were these hard rocks, really. They were so bad that I threw them out in my backyard and even the birds wouldn't eat them. I mean, they were bad. And I have never attempted scones since. I'll have to find a better recipe maybe sometime that is in, what's the opposite of metric called? Not. I don't know, inches, or not inches, because you know you don't measure that way, but like um, cups and ounces and things like that, that I could handle. But I think, it, I, I'm assuming it was the conversion, because nobody would willingly eat scones that looked or tasted the way that mine did. Hopefully this cake will be a lot better. Okay, the cakes, um, I think you already saw me take them out of the oven. Um, I had a little bit of a mishap when I was taking them out of the pans. So you're supposed to let them cool in the pans for about 15 minutes, but obviously they were still a little bit warm. Um, the first layer, I went to take out, sort of in my usual way of taking things out of the pan, which is I kind of put my hand over it, flipped it over, and of course it broke into a couple of pieces, um, which you can see, I don't know, I don't know if you can see this one. Can you see that one? Okay, so that's broken into a couple of pieces. That obviously was not supposed to happen, but it did. So what I'm gonna do when I wind up assembling the cake is I'm gonna try to put that in the middle and hope that the two layers on top of it and below it and the frosting will kind of hold it all together. So what I wound up doing for the second two to get them out was I took a cookie sheet and here, let me demonstrate with the cake pan. I turned the cake pan over on the cookie sheet and then I turned it over um, or no I took this right I took the, I put the cake pan with the cake in it on the cookie sheet and I gently uh, shook it till it loosened up and came out so then we had it upside down on the cookie sheet it was perfect because I had to remove that wax paper layer which by the way this broken layer still has the wax paper on the bottom so I'm gonna have to figure out how to take that off um, but anyway, and then I took the wire cooling rack, put it on top of the cake, which was upside down in the cookie sheet, turned that whole thing over. That seemed to work out. Those two layers look fine. So take it from me. Try not to make the same mistake I did. I made the mistake so you won't have to. Now I'm going to put together my cream cheese frosting, but I'm going to let those cakes completely cool as much as possible before I actually frost it. So for the... Um, cream cheese frosting, we are going to take three quarters of a cup of softened butter. It's not really that soft, but it's a little bit soft. That's a half a cup and a quarter cup. And an eight ounce package of cream cheese. I always have trouble opening these. I'm just going to use the scissors because 
I can't seem to pull it apart. I'll take this is not going well, people. Okay, I'm gonna take my eight ounce brick of cream cheese. Ugh. This is why I don't cook, I get frustrated. Okay, and now it says to take another three ounce package. I don't have a three ounce package, so I'll just take another eight ounce package. Hold on, I gotta wash my hands. They're cheesy. That's not a that's not a proper hand washing for purposes of keeping the virus apart, but that was just to get the cream cheese off my hands. Okay. All right, that one opened right up, which is good because this one I want about half. So I'm just going to use my hand and break off about half the brick. And we're just going to beat that at medium speed. basic cream cheese frosting recipe, so you know you can use this on anything, muffins, um, uh, danish, you know, whatever you want. Okay, that's pretty creamy. Let me use my spatula and just push some of the part that sticks to the beater off to make sure that it all gets nice and mixed in. Then we're going to add three cups of sifted powdered sugar, which I already have here. I probably should be using my pouring shield for this, but I'm not. I'm going to add this all at once, but I'm going to make sure to start the beater on low so that the sugar doesn't go flying. I'm having a little trouble getting this out. You know what? I'm going to take the one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Mm. Barely just got, oh, what the heck? Oh, I forgot. There's actually a vanilla bean in the bottle of vanilla. So I'm taking that out. Okay, so that's one teaspoon. Oh, here is our half. Okay. So we got the vanilla in there and the powdered sugar and now we are just going to beat this until it's smooth and remember I'm going to start off slow actually even at the slow temperature the sugar is sort of flying all over so I'm going to just give it a hand mix first just to kind of get that sugar Blend it in just enough so that it doesn't go flying. These are the little things that make it obvious I'm a complete amateur. Yes, I'm getting covered in sugar. Oh, so tasty. And we're just going to beat this until it's creamy. Um, and then when the cake is completely cooled, that's what um, when we're going to frost it. So um, I'm going to let that dose cool off a little longer. But in the meantime, this will just be beating until it's smooth. Okay, it's time to frost the cake. So I've already put the first layer on my cake plate and frosted um, the top of that layer. Now I'm going to put my broken layer on top. So I decided what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attempt 
to put it on this cake upside down because really it doesn't matter which direction it's in um, and that way I can just hopefully peel that layer of wax paper off the bottom without flipping this over and breaking it even further. So wish me luck. Okay, well that went pretty well. Um, so let me just remove the wax paper. And as you can see, it's broken, as we know. I'm just gonna try to push that little piece back in there. So, what happened to, oh, there's my spreader, okay. So I'm gonna just try to, you know, hope that between the frosting and the top layer, that that's gonna hold that together more or less. Now, I don't know how much, I, since I've never made this before, I don't really know how much frosting there is relative to the surface. So I'm gonna frost it in a pretty thin layer because I don't really wanna run out of frosting. Although, if I do, I can make a little bit more, but I'd rather not do that. So because when I frost the whole cake, the top, I want to um, get the sides too. All right, that's about as good as I'm gonna get because I'm afraid if I go over that broken part, I'm just gonna break it more. So now we have one more layer. Let me get that layer. very gently and place it on top. Now these layers, the middle one is slightly off kilter to the bottom one, but they're pretty close. Okay. So now I'm gonna just frost that top and then I'm gonna go around the sides and through the magic of television, and you should see that in a minute, having progressed quite a bit. Okay, so as you can see, I've frosted the top of the cake and most of the sides. I'm over in that spot where the cake was broken, so it's a little crummy. So I'm gonna try to add a little extra frosting to kind of get over that spot. I'm not the neatest froster in the world, but I think what it tastes like is more important than what it looks like. I'm not doing this for, you know, commercial purposes. My mother used to make a cake. It was sort of like a strawberry shortcake, except that it was, uh, I think, more of a, a pound cake or an angel food cake and not actual shortcake. But the people she used to make it for used to call it the ugly cake because she made real whipped cream frosting and it was delicious. But, you know, it was really not that attractive, but nobody cared because it tasted so good. So I think that's gonna kind, of, kind of be the case with this. I definitely have enough frosting, so I'm gonna just try to add a little bit extra on the top to give it a nice smooth layer. But I have to leave a little bit in the bowl, I've been instructed, so that the uh, director of photography can have a little bit on its own. And let's see. I think. that's going to be about it. Now, would the director of photography like like a piece now or did you want to wait? I'll try a piece. Okay. So, we're going to cut into this and see what it looks like and what it, more importantly, what it tastes like. Remember, this is my first time making this. I'm actually pretty pleased with how it looks anyway. I've never been on TV before. I'm a little scared. <laughs> I 
first piece is always the tough one. This is what it looks like. As you can see, I did my layers of frosting in between the layers, the cake layers, but I did not put it on really thick because I wanted to make sure that um, I had enough frosting to go around. But, you know, if you want a thicker, thicker cream cheese frosting, you can always make, um, make a little bit extra. Are we sharing okay. this? No, you can try it okay. first. Okay, I'm using my fork to cut into the carrot cake, and now I'm going to take, pull up the fork and stick it in my mouth. Mmm, <laughs> that's good carrot. <laughs> can I taste it? Yeah. Mm. Oh my god, it's, no, it's really good. And the, if it's one word I could describe this cake, moist. moist. <laughs> mm. Gosh, it's really moist. You can mm. taste the pineapple. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is this is really good. Wow. I can't believe I got to witness it. I know. It's that good. <laughs> okay, everybody. I was going to cut my a piece for myself, but I think I'm going to wait because mm. it's pretty rich. So, again... Here is the best Ooh. carrot cake. Oh, God. Hope you enjoyed it. It's really good.